Now, let me ask you a question. You, so you, you did the location scouting. You had They gave you time for that. And then you go with your crew and you sit down and you start putting a story together. <clears throat> I don't even know how the heck this is fathomable. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when do you finish writing and start actually planning how you're going to light it? Do you, did you have to like, figure out how you're going to light when you got there? I mean, in other words, you have, in the scene, you have written down the scene, there's going to be a hallway shot. So you get there on that day in the hallway, and okay, now how are we lighting this sucker? Or did you already pre-think the lighting? And, you know, I'm just wondering, how, does, how did that work out? Yeah, basically before the whole thing got, uh, before the, you know, festival started, um, we, we sat down, and it was uh, the director and first AD and, and myself um, sat down, and basically, basically we reversed engineered it. Um, we said, okay, if our deadline is, uh, I think it was like six o'clock on, um, on Sunday. So, so if that's when we have to turn it in, then, um, here's how the schedule needs to work backwards. And when we meet, when we need to be done with different elements in order to meet, meet that deadline. Um, so we knew that, um, you know, it started at six o'clock on Friday and, um, I believe it was six o'clock. Anyway, yeah, right around there. Um, we knew that by twelve o'clock at night, we we had to have a locked script and 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 we had to be had to be shooting. Uh, um, and during during that time, um, you know, I was working with with the with the gaffer and and my first AC and and other um, crew members to do some pre lighting. We had no clue what 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 the story was going to be. Um, other than we knew that we had some great mysterious looking locations and that, and that the writers were going to try to write towards something that was more mysterious and something that was more gritty. Uh, um, so, so they were writing to our locations and I was uh, prepping the lighting to be, um, you know, to, to reinforce kind of the mystery and the grit and the grime um, of the locations that we had so that by the time we started shooting, um, those two would, you know, essentially marry together. Wow, that's, I mean, that seems like so much to, to get right. I mean, what if you chose the wrong light? I mean, what if yep. you said, okay, here, you know what I mean? What if you said, hey, this is, what, this is the list I need. You show up and like, oh, man, this light sucks right now. I need this one. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you really have to have your, that's, I mean, you got to have, I mean, you're, you're an experienced cinematographer, so you know what each light is going to give you and what, you know, the different types. You know what a, you know what a, you know, an, uh, an open face is going to do as opposed to a source four. So, uh, you know, so, so you know what to pick and, and be ready. Uh, I'm very curious on, and this might be a more of a general question, but, uh -huh. uh, but it also can apply here, is you, your relationship with a gaffer. How does how what do you rely on them to do for you in terms of lighting? Because obviously, as a cinematographer, a director of photography, you're in charge. You're in charge of the lighting. But how much of that do you say? You know, hey, Mr. Gaffer, my good buddy here. You, you know, this is what I want it to look like. Good luck, and then I'll come by and just and just and, and tweak it. How much? Of, yeah. How much of that do you do, and how much do you let them do, etc. Yeah, um, it it varies from job to job because some of the gaffers I work with are less less experienced and some of them are more experienced. Um, generally, well, the, regardless of uh, the experience level, the gaffers I, I work with, um, I'll come in with a game plan and I'll, and I'll say, you know, this is where I want the light source to come from. Um, and sometimes I'll su I'll suggest units like I want, um, you know, I want a one k you know open face over here or um, you know. Just, just to get, you know, some, some ideas flowing, um, and and then I'll basically say, you know, this is the look that I'm trying to create. In in the end, that's all I care about. I don't, I don't, you know, if if we need to swap out lights, if, if you have a better way of making this happen, go go for it and, and make it happen. This is the look that I want. So you're so so. It's interesting. It's like you know, I, you know, let's 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 make let's call you a painter for a moment. You're a painter, you're a master painter, and you have an assistant who's going to help you create your painting. But you're mm -hmm. the one with the skill. And you know that this certain brush is going to give you a certain look. But yet you're telling me that you don't mind giving him the leeway to choose a different brush. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll achieve the final look his own way. Is that, right. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah. With, with the more... Um, 
in in an ideal situation, I get to work with a with a gaffer who's way more experienced than I am, and and I I really enjoy that because anytime I can work with people that are better than me, the, then then products can be so much better. And um, really, a, a gaffer is working with lights day in and day out. They know how to string them up. They know how to you know run the power. They know how to you know what what lamps are going to do what. Um, they're working with all that equipment a lot more than I am. Um, so I might have an idea of of what I like, but really they're the expert in, in that in that bit. So if they can help me get to the end goal that I want to get, that's that's really that's really what I care about. Wow. I mean, do, do, would you say that it's um, you know, I, I, a cinematographer, director, of photography, I believe, really needs to have a mastery. I mean, it should be obvious. It has to have a mastery of lighting. But it sounds to me like you're saying, yeah, they need to have a mastery of lighting, but more on the final product, not necessarily on how to execute it. It's not a, it's not a uh, it's, it, they don't have to uh, be embarrassed to say, hey, I'm going to bring in somebody else who's more experienced with all the tools, but mm -hmm. I want this look. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, because... Honestly, there have been times where you know I've suggested tools that aren't necessarily appropriate for the job. Um, like there, for example, I was shooting a spot for um, for Adidas, and um, we needed to do. Uh, we're shooting some basketball footage, and I needed some really powerful HMI lights, um, you know, to light. And I hadn't worked with you know that size of a light. A whole heck of a lot. Yeah. So I did. I did my research beforehand. Went went on the um, Airy website and pulled out the pulled out the schematics of you know uh, of how much light that that uh, those HMIs would give me. Um, and and I thought that a one point two k HMI for now would would get us there. But in consulting with the gaffer, who's you know more experienced with me, he. Um, his recommendation was to go with the 1.2K uh, PAR instead because that would give us more than enough light um, and, and, and allow us to definitely do what we want. Um, and if we needed to, we could always you know, pull the light levels back. And so, so that was where I was leaning on, on his expertise of you know, working day in and day out with these actual you know, lamp units to come in and say, you know, um, yeah, we can still get the look you're, you're looking for. Um, but if we use this tool, we'll be we'll be better suited for for this project. Right, right. Well, that's I think uh, for a lot of people, might be might come off as a surprise that a that a that a cinematographer just more has to have the vision, seems to me, <laughs> um, than the actual know how on on how to mold the you know mold the the the, the tools to get the result. Yeah, um, but that only works if you're working with people that are better than you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. I, so I have worked with you know people that are that are just getting started as as gaffers and, and are a little less little, little less experienced, um, and so so it's those times where I really lean on my own experience from you know from lighting projects and and you know having to do it myself that and and my own experiments that um, you know I say okay well this is. And I, I know that if I come at it from this from this perspective, I'll get where I want to go. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's finding that balance between um, between dictating and allowing creativity. Because because I've also found from a crew level, like like the more input that you can get from your crew, the more invested they end up becoming in the project. Right. Um, I mean, even. Even when I show up on on, on a shoot, um, I'm not super interested in working with, um, you know, w working with a director that that basically micromanages every little thing that I do. Um, I want to be contributing to the to the final image, and um, and so does the rest of the crew that I work with. So the more um, the more that I can allow that create or, or that collaboration, yeah. um, the better the end, end product becomes. So I mean that that's how I like to work, and I think anybody who's got it together, <laughs> yeah. you know, basically likes to work. It seems like it's just a top down. The director has has his vision. He brings that across to the cinematographer. The cinematographer does his thing to 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 accomplish that vision. He then has to bring that down to the gaffer so that they can light according to his what he wants and so right. forth. 
Yeah. Uh, and and it all it all it all comes back to the to the director and, and, and his overall vision. But everybody's doing their part and then passing passing along, you know, the next person has to help them out to achieve it. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, so I think there's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, things here that might might surprise a few people on how it works. But I think one of the key points that that you know I don't want people to to, to like uh, you know think okay cinematographer director photography I don't really need to be a master at lighting I just need to know in my mind what I want <laughs> and have somebody else do it. That's like you said that maybe you can get away with that if it's like you know you got some a real master gaffer with you. And uh, you know, and maybe a budget and time and etc. But you know what? That what's 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 tough there is communicating that clearly to the gaffer. I mean, it yep. seems like you you probably have to do very good research to maybe show them visuals of the idea because what what you say is not necessarily going to come across and what's you know what's in your mind. It's very hard to to get that out. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. um... And when the more specific and clear I can be in my communication, the quicker and um, easier it's going to be to get there. And if if I, if I'm having a tough time, um, you know, communicating what it, what I want to the rest of my crew, that that's when I'll, I'll I'll show like a reference image or or I'll show like you know this is the this is the idea you know that I'm going for. Um, and I did that a lot more when I was you know, first starting out because I didn't quite have the language and didn't quite have the understanding. I knew what I wanted, but I had no clue on how to get there. And, and so after, you know, years of, um, you know, experimenting and, and, and getting out there and, and doing it, you know, I, I become familiar with, with what lamps will do and what different modifiers will do. Uh, so I can actually make intelligent, you know, yeah. decisions. Yeah. Well, wow. Okay, Ryan, this was great. I mean, I, I got a ton out of this. Uh, well, I think we should wrap up. We've been going for, I don't know how long, 40-some minutes. You know, this day and age, people's attention spans are... <laughs> I know, it's <laughs> <sad. laughs> but, but I got a lot out of it because, um, let me tell you, I mean, really to, 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 to see how you did this in such a short amount of time, uh, also to see the, 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 the decision-making in, the, in, in how to execute the technical aspects of it, even without the short amount of time, I think there was some brilliant... Uh, 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 you know, decisions that you had there on how to achieve it um, that maybe you would have done regardless uh, of mm -hmm. the time, and uh, and then and then of course you know this the, the this understanding of how to work with a gaff and everything to me that was a uh, uh, you know a, it it it's nice to know that I don't have to be scared when somebody at your level as well yeah. is saying hey you know I bring in you know people that are better than me all the time because they have more experience in the in the tools to create what I want. Uh, yep. So you you have an, you have a, a high level of working with the tools to get to a certain you know to get a certain result, but there's no shame in bringing in people who can can help you with the with the lighting. You know I think a lot of people yeah, exactly. they, they hear lighting they say hey that's your job, that's your job. You know maybe somebody else will physically do the work, but that's your job to say what and how much and where to point it and all that kind of stuff. And you're saying yep. hey let somebody else you know give his input and there's not you know maybe he'll do a better job than you. If they're more experienced, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, as a cinematographer or DP, you have to have the vision and you have to know where you're going. Um, but you know, to micromanage every little tool, uh, I don't see much benefit there. Right, right, right. Sometimes you have no choice. Like I said, I do a lot of this low budget stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, they don't give me a gaffer. <laughs> yep, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you, so you, ha you really need to be uh, on your game. And I, and I think you know, let's make sure that nobody gets lazy now. And yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, and 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 goes out there and, and hones their skills. And also, you need to play with that stuff so that you can communicate with them. You, yeah. you know, you won't have the 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 the, the you won't have that conversation. You can, <laughs> right. You can't talk yep. their language if you if you haven't done it yourself. Yeah. Um, well, and 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 I think um, I think both situations feed upon one another because, like I, I, you know, like you, there there'll be small budget productions I'll work on where. You know, I, I get to be the DP, the gaffer, and the grip. Um, so I'm I'm doing all all three. So that that helps me to be better prepared to talk to someone else about how to get to where I want to go. And alternatively, when I'm working with somebody who's better than me, um, as as far as like a gaffer and all that kind of stuff, and I watch them do what they do to get where I want to. Then the next time when I'm out on my own, I you know I've I've, I've got that additional skill set to get to where I need to go a whole lot quicker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah.